Within the myriad of possibilities to get your ship to sink, few people consider the very treasure that you have on board. No, I don't mean any sort of weight limit. Of course, I'm talking about the legendary chest of sorrows. You ever wonder why that chest is crying? Because nobody wants to have it on their ship. And that for good reason. Among the cursed pieces of treasure you can find on the seas, most of them make for but a minor inconvenience. A wee bit of fire on the one side and being made drunk on the other, neither of these chests compared to the struggles associated with a chest that constantly fills your ship with water. Water. And it is that struggle that I decided to bestow upon my enemies. That's right, my friends, today we're going to try and weaponize the power of the most dangerous chest in the game. Once we have found it. Yeah, I think you can see where this is going. Before any such conquest could take place, we had to find a way to get our hands on that chest in the first place. And with it being a completely random spawn, we'd have to bring a lot of patience. In my experience, most of the cursed pieces of treasure I found came from skeleton captains dropping treasure maps. I mean, heck, we found no less than three of them during our rowboat episode, so how difficult could it be? Birdie and I began hopping from island to island in hopes of encountering as many skelly captains as possible, and needless to say that we were met with a lot of hostility. While skeletons did show up on a fairly regular basis, captains did not. Fortunately for us, we found some treasure maps and random barrels, which at least gave us a starting point. What was unfortunate, however, was that apparently Birdie and I were not very good at reading said maps. I legitimately cannot find those either. Yeah, I don't know. I've seen this island before. I know I have. Yeah, we were not off to a great start. It took us way longer to find the island than I'm comfortable with admitting, but at last, our destination was Fool's Lagoon. Our island-specific dyslexia thankfully did not translate over to the actual dig spots, allowing me to find the treasure immediately. But of course, I would not be me if I immediately got what I wanted. After an hour of searching island after island after island, we decided that it wasn't the treasure that was cursed, it was our server. With not a single skelly captain in sight, Birdie suggested for us to portal hop onto another the server in hopes of better luck over there. And wouldn't you know it, the very first island immediately had a captain for us to defeat. It really did seem like all the captains from our previous server had fled onto this one because suddenly we found a bunch of them. The ship sinking power of the chest of sorrows was so close I could almost taste it. <laughs> I mean, not what I wanted, but... Okay, I was not entirely wrong. Stronghold gunpowder kegs are more than capable of sinking ships, though it appeared as though Rare had misunderstood my request, because instead of giving us the chest we wanted, we found two more gunpowder kegs. So far into our search, we had limited ourselves to only targeting small islands, because it was a lot easier to see whether or not they had skelly spawns on them. But since those had not yielded the success we anticipated, we began searching bigger islands as well. It is at this point that I would like to remind you that luck is a finite resource in this game. Every time I need something lucky to occur and something else that is also very lucky ends up happening to me, I never end up getting what I actually want. When Birdie found a massive pile of loot on Mermaid's hideaway, I knew that our luck had finally ran out. Awesome, we now had tons and tons of treasure on our ship but never found the one piece of loot that we actually wanted. After 21 scouted islands across two servers, I decided that it was time for plan B. Yes my friends, there is a way to get a guaranteed chest of sorrows which includes completing a specific tall tale. But Cliff, you might be wondering, if you can guarantee that job, why did you just spend two hours hoping for a random spawn? Well, there are a few downsides to the tall tale method. I mean, for one, you actually have to do a tall tale, but you'll see later why I would have rather had a randomly spawned one than the specific one we get off this approach. Now I know that a lot of you guys are even newer to this game than me, so I'm not gonna spoil any of the set pieces in the story mission. Just know that at one point, you have the choice to go down an optional path, which leads you to the key to the silver blade. You can use this key to open a cabin, which gives you access to, you guessed it, a chest of sorrows. If you complete the challenges that come as part of the tall tale and survive the everlasting horror of endless exposition, you can get this bad boy out of the mission zone and onto your ship. The chest was finally ours, which means that the real game could begin. It was time to find a target. Before we tried to sink another crew, we figured it was only appropriate to test it out on some AI. We spotted a skelly galleon not too far off. Random patrols are not gonna attack you until you threaten them, which means we'd have a good chance to get on. This was about as perfect of an opportunity as I could ask for. I got on the ship without a hitch and none of the skellies even tried to stop me. With the chest of sorrows locked and loaded, I could escape their vessel knowing they would sink in due time. The funny thing about skeletons is that they have not discovered bucketing technology. That means any amount of water they take on will stay 
either until they sink. To prove the point of not even needing to shoot a single cannonball to defeat them, we just sailed around as we waited for the chest to fill their hole. Okay, granted, I did fire a peace ball at them just so they stopped shooting at us, but it's not like that sustained any damage. The skeletons legitimately had no idea how to handle the chest as it relentlessly filled their ship with water, and a few minutes later, they sank. This was about as free a loot hole as I could ask for, but more importantly than that, we felt empowered to try and do the same thing to an actual player ship. We spotted a sloop at a sunken vessel. If we wanted to have a chance of making this work, we'd need to strike silently and hit a crew that is distracted. Sadly, these guys were absolutely not distracted enough and sailed away before we even got close enough to try. The annoying thing about the tall tale variety of the chest of sorrows is that it's actually a chest of everlasting sorrows. We had to constantly bucket our ship as we were looking for a new target, and I think you start to understand why this was my plan B as opposed to plan A. Just as much as that sloop was my plan A, we spotted another plan B currently on the way to an Ashen Winds event. This Reaper Brigantine would be our next target, hopefully distracted enough by the event for us to sneak on and sink them silently before they knew what hit them. But we didn't want to raise any suspicion, and also our rowie was filled to the brim with loot, so unless we wanted to roll up as a loot pinata, we'd probably want to sell that stuff before making our way over there. Speedrun selling all of our loot any percent was the name of the game, but what little time we used to rid ourselves of these riches was enough for Rare to simultaneously bless and curse us with a storm. Sure, it would cover our approach, but at the same time, finding our way would be made even more difficult as was trying to stay on the dang rowboat, but just taking our sense of direction was not enough because in due time, the storm had also claimed our vehicle. But things got even worse. I had not realized it at the time, but the reason we had so much trouble finding the Reaper Brigantine was because they had completed the event already. And without a red shining storm leading our way through the darkness, so we could find was certain demise. Um, Birdie? The Reaper flag is gone. I think they sunk. You think so? You think the storm sunk them? I didn't say it was a storm, I just said I think they sunk. Oh, that's a sloop already there. This was no storm ruining our plans, it was another crew! And not just any crew, the sloop that sailed away from us earlier had just taken the heads of that Reaper Brigantine and now they were keen to do the same to us. Never mind, they know what they're doing. Competent crew, competent crew. I cannot load the thing. Border on the right. Oh shit, border. So much for our attempted stealth mission, these guys were at least on par if not better at PvP than us. Once I had disposed of the weakened border, I had to make a painful decision. Between the storm and our chest filling our ship with water, our Swiss cheese looking hull made it clear that we could not survive much longer. If I wanted any chance of staying afloat, I had to drop the chest of sorrows overboard and reclaim it at a later time. It truly was the most dangerous chest to our survival at that point. Once we had bucketed most of the water out of our ship, we could finally raise the anchor to start a counterattack, but just when we began finding our footing... I just got blunder bombed off, god damn it. Fire? Ah, so oh, One is on, one is on. I'm, I'm off right now, I got blundered off. They're still throwing fire bombs, that's interesting. Okay, I got him, still anchored over here. Okay. Lord knows this would have been it if I had kept the chest of sorrows on board. The storm was just as relentless as that crew. I apologize in advance for what this is gonna look like on your screen after YouTube compression, but trust me when I say that my crewmate being on their ship was about the only thing I could use to guide my shots. In what I later found out was a complete accident, Birdie had put our ship into a perfect death spin, allowing me to absolutely lay into these guys while occasionally bucketing our own ship to stay afloat. The cursed cannonballs we found while island hopping were really coming in clutch because all the trouble that the storm was giving us also applied to them, meaning getting cursed was the cherry on top. I shot on over to finish the job, but before I could get on the ship, they had already sunk. We exchanged well-mannered GGs after what was one of the best fights I had in a really long time, and since I only cared about one specific item, do you still have the Ashen Winds loot on the island? Like, you can come back and have the loot, we don't care about the loot, we just wanted to fight. Uh, okay. Oh, okay, 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 okay. okay. GG, so it was a good fight. <laughs> as much as I love myself a good fight, it was definitely a failure in regards to what we sought out to do. Birdie and I immediately made way for the nearest island to give it another try, finding a rowboat as well as a scally captain for another shot at a crying chest. And well, let's just say that things came full circle in a bit of a funny way. You struggling? Yeah, this one is giving me a hard time. <laughs> if you're on the wrong side. God damn it. What island are we at? I found it. <laughs> Bro, stop, <laughs> <up, rare. laughs>
<laughs> yeah, I think I can take a hint when it slaps me in the face. As fun as it is to do crazy stuff like that, sometimes relying on a good old-fashioned boom keg is just the way to go. If you want to see a video where I did make use of one of such fated kegs to turn the tides, then what about you check out my episode titled Never Underestimate Solo Players? You can find the card on screen right now. But until then, thank you everybody so much for watching. Don't forget to drop me a like on your way out. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe if you want to see more, and definitely ring that bell icon to not miss out on my next upload. I hope you guys have a day filled with riches on the sea, and until next time, peace.